Hello, everyone. Eh, never mind. Hello, everyone. This is Sumerian, and in this video, we are going to be doing some advanced triggering actor connections. So, in this video, we are going to set up some logic so that I can put five physics balls down on the ground, and I can control one of the balls and move it about wherever I want, whenever I want, but I won't affect any of the other balls while I'm doing it. Uh, so before we start, we have to understand how some of the signals are passed between creativity toys in Infinity. So first, it's important to note that signals are momentary, and they only happen at the moment of triggering. For example, with a trigger area, a signal sent at the exact time that our object or AI or player enters or exits the trigger area. A signal does not remain the entire time that you are still within the trigger area. It is only at the moment of entering or exiting that a momentary signal is sent. So this hinders what we're about to trying to do. We're about to try to do, but it's still a great system for Infinity. Works well for almost everything in the game. I'm not complaining about it. I'm just saying it hampers us a lot. So second, quite a few of the triggering creativity toys can pass information on who or what triggered them. Trigger areas, triggers, buttons, targets. Most of the toys that create signals from interacting with players or other objects can pass this information on. And it's this information that I'm referring to when I say triggering actor. So again, as an example, let's say a physics ball enters this trigger area. Well, this trigger area sends the entered signal, but in that signal is information that says exactly which physics ball just entered the area. Uh, so I view these toys as information creator toys. They create the signal that carries triggering actor information. Third, there are a few creative toys that can actually take advantage of this triggering information. They are the kill switch, the weather vane, the target vent camera, and I think there's a couple more as well. Um, you can set these toys up to only target the exact triggering actor that is carried in the signal that's being used to activate these toys. So another example is a physical ball enters that trigger area, and I've got that trigger area tied to a kill switch. Uh, so if that, trig that one physics ball uh, enters that trigger area, poof, it's going to disappear. And only the physics ball that enters the trigger area will be destroyed. So I view these toys as information user toys. They can take advantage of triggering actor information. And finally, there are very few creative toys that pass triggering actor information through them. They don't create the signal, they don't use the signal, but they can pass the signal along. Uh, the two primary examples of toys that can do this are the logic gate and time delays. So we are going to take full advantage of the fact that the logic gate can pass triggering actor information along in this tutorial. So let's get into it. What I am aiming to do is grab one of these physics balls, move it into this trigger area, and then be able to use these weather vanes to move it up and down whenever I want. And to do that, we are going to trust on one of my favorite creative toys, the wonderful, perfect, absolutely amazing logic gate. So what we're going to do at first is we're just going to take a sim simple signal. And the only reason I'm locking this down to physics ball is so if I accidentally walk into this trigger area, I don't accidentally start the system and have it focus on me. So I'm going to say if a physics ball enters that trigger area, I'm just going to send a simple input to this logic gate. And I'm going to output that logic gate into the input of this logic gate. Now the trick is I need to keep this triggering actor information for the entire game. I need to figure out how to always know that what I'm doing is focused on the physics ball that entered this area and only this physics ball. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a loop. So I'm going to make the output of this logic gate 
simply return the input back to this logic gate. So now it's just going in a circle. My triggering actor information is sitting in this, these two logic gates just going around and around and around. So, great, we captured the triggering actor information. What are we going to do with it? Well, we're going to create another thing I'm kind of talk about every now and then. We're going to make a logic chain. A logic chain just allows us to perform various actions based on whether these gates are open or closed. It's a multi-position switch. So beautiful. We just created a logic chain by attaching the input block to the input of the next one down the chain. Wonderful. We're still not accomplishing anything. Our loop is going happy and merry and nothing's happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down two trigger areas at first. Um, one will be if I want the ball to go that way, upwards, and one is going to be if I want it to come back towards me. And lastly, I'm going to put a switch in over here, and if I push this switch, I'm going to destroy that physics ball. Just get rid of it. So, how do we do this? Well, what we want to do is we want to say, if you step on this trigger, I'm going to close this logic gate, which, since we did a logic ch uh, chain, is going to now pass the signal down to this logic gate, which is still open. So the output of this logic gate is going to tell this weather vane to turn on. Now I have to set the weather vane be affected by just triggering actor and you see the option right there and I'm going to turn down the force just a little bit and I'll do that to the other one while I'm at it. Now the thing with weather vanes is they are uh, they can use triggering actor information but they don't pass it along so I only want this to be momentary so I'm going to use a time delay to say okay after let's say two seconds, I want to turn this weather vane back off. So let's set it to two seconds, delay completed, off. And I'll just set this one up while we're here. Two seconds, delay completed, off. Now the problem is if I say when the weather vane turns on, start this time delay. I'm not passing, passing trigger actor information to this time delay. So when it tells this weather vane to turn off, it won't work because it doesn't know what object I'm talking about. Now, as I said before, time delayers can pass trigger actor information, but the weather vane doesn't provide it. So instead, I'm going to have to say at the same output that turned on this weather vane, I'm going to provide the triggering actor information as well to this time delay. So now, two seconds later, it will know which triggering actor to turn the weather vane effect off of. Now, what has just happened is our loop has stopped. We've come out down to this one and we've come out. So if I don't do anything, I'm going to lose that triggering actor information. So what I need to say is, if I have an output, I need to input, so I've started the loop back up. But I also don't want this, because it's going really, really fast at this point. There's probably happening 50 or 60 times a second this loop. So I also want to make sure I only trigger the time delay and the weather vane once. So in this output, I also want to say, reopen this logic gate to start this loop going again. And whenever this logic gate opens, just to keep things nice and tidy, I'm going to have it open every other logic gate here. So there. Now the up function should work because this trigger area is closing this logic gate and the output is firing these two things off and then instantly continuing the loop by providing an input back to this guy and opening this logic gate back up so the loop will continue up here. 
So if I want to go down, I'm going to use this trigger and I'm going to say player any. And now I need this gate to close and I need this gate to close. But the problem is because this cycle is happening so fast, if I send a close to both these logic gates, one of them, it's possible, will close shortly before the other one does. So the problem could be if this top one closes before the bottom one closes, the signal will come out, input blocked, and this gate's not closed yet, so it's going to fire off our up, cir our up circuit. And that'll just be egg in our face. It'll look horrible, and we don't want that to happen. We want our circuit to always work properly. So what we're going to say is, if this gate closes, close the top gate. What we want to happen is any gate we need to close, we want to start at the far end of the logic chain. And if so, if this gate closes, I want to open the one above it. And if this gate closes, I want to open the one above it. And we've already set up this to close that gate. So what will happen is no matter what, the last gate to be closed in however we need this circuit configured will be the one that's holding the triggering actor information loop. And therefore, the signal will always come out the proper output once it gets down here. So to finish off our down circuit, we've got it so that this gate is closing, which means this one is still open. So we need the output of this gate to turn on the weather vane with our triggering actor information and to also start our time delayer with our triggering actor information. And we have to always remember we can't lose that triggering actor information. We have to keep the loop going. So I have to remember to send an input back up, keep the loop going, and I have to remember to open this logic gate so I keep the loop up here. So it only happens once and then the loop keeps going up here. Now the last thing we're going to do is program this button to uh, activate this kill switch and just get rid of the ball force. So we want to close this gate and it's already set up. So when he closes, he'll close one above. When he closes, he'll close the one above. So the signal, when it does finally come out the input block of this logic gate, will come all the way down and come out the output of this gate. Now, if you've seen my logic chains before, you're maybe wondering why I didn't just use the output and input block of this gate up here to achieve these two things. But I want to make it easy for you to add more possible functions into this chain. You could just add another gate and tie the input block and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to use the output of this gate is going to be tied to this defeat. And it's carrying the triggering actor information. So if I just tied this button up to the skill switch and I pushed it, it would kill my player. But because it's carrying the triggering actor information for the ball, it is going to destroy that ball for us. Now again, we want to open this logic gate just to keep it nice and clean. But what we don't want, since we're destroying the ball, is after that ball is destroyed, I don't want that triggering actor information anymore. I've gotten rid of that ball. So I'm not going to send an input up to this logic gate. If you were adding other things like left and right to the ball, of course you would want to take that output, tie it back up to the input, keep the triggering actor information in your loop here, you always have to hold on to it, but in this situation where I'm getting rid of the actor himself, I don't need that information anymore. So, there you go. That chain should be keeping our triggering actor information and allow us to move this ball up and down the field whenever we want. Now, the important thing is I have to actually get that ball into the trigger area. Because if, oh, there goes that ball. Maybe I'll put a little closer because I'm not very good at this. I'll put it right here. 
Now I need that ball to get hit this trigger area once, and however you want to do it, it's up to you. I was just uh, working on the toy box right now where I devised a little way to make sure that my actor went through the trigger area at least once, and actually only once, so that I could capture that triggering actor information for them and keep it for the entire game. But for now, I'm just going to give this ball a little push into that trigger. And now, if I step on this, the ball moves up. If I step on it again, that ball is moving, and only that ball is moving. Now, if it hits the other ball, of course they're going to react to physics, and they'll roll away. But the only ball being affected by this weather vane is that ball. And see, I sent it down. I can make it go back up. I have complete control of this ball because I've captured that triggering actor information in this loop. So I always have it for the rest of the game if I don't let go of it. And the way I've set these two triggers up, I don't have to let go of it. I will have it for the whole game. So as you can see, yeah, I'm easily in control of this ball. Every time I tell it to do the opposite, or when I tell it to activate one of those weather vanes, only that ball is being affected. So now I'm going to push this button and it should get rid of this ball and it should also get rid of the triggering actor information that we've got trapped in a loop here. So there, that ball has disappeared. The rest of the balls are still sitting there. Or the rest of the two that didn't fall off anywhere. And if I put a couple more back, I should be able to push another ball into this triggering actor area, the trigger area, and because I've already let go of that triggering actor information, I should be able to take control of this ball. Come on, make it in. Get in there. You can do it. And there we go. I now have control of that ball. And there you go. That is how you capture triggering actor information so you can use it for the entire toy box instead of just relying on trigger areas and switches to try and use a triggering actor. Uh, I've actually got a toy box that uses this extensively in a much more complicated formula than this. It'll be really soon. And uh, if you have any more questions on how this all works or I have been a little too vague on things, Feel free to leave me a comment, or you can always find me on Disney Infinity Fans. Just shoot me a message there. Uh, so again, this has been Sumerian, and I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial.